After their sudden departure at the end of 2017, Porsche, it seemed, was finished racing in the LMP class at Le Mans. However, in what feels like the blink of an eye, they're back. With Porsche releasing their latest 963 LMDH hypercar, aiming for their 20th victory at Le Mans, it's time to discuss that car a little bit more in depth, as well as discuss the differences between the new Le Mans hypercar class category and the new LMDH category as well. One thing is for certain though, the new regulations and the new cars are going to be providing some amazing racing next year. Seeing as it's the latest car to be released from the new LMDH regulations, and it's currently the only LMDH car that's working as of today, let's dive first into the Porsche 963. Released at the Festival of Speed last week, it certainly drew some attention with it arguably being one of the best LMDH cars in terms of looks that we've currently seen. Developed with the help of Team Penske and running a chassis developed by Multimatic from the LMP2 class, the 963 is going to be joining the grid alongside the likes of BMW, Audi and Cadillac to name but a few, as well as competing in Le Mans alongside Toyota, Peugeot and Ferrari. But we're going to get into that a little bit later on because it can be a little bit confusing. The 963 is powered by a 4.6 litre bi-turbo V8, which was actually used originally in the 918 Spider back in 2014. If you dive even further back than that, you'll actually find that the engine was originally used in the RS Spider from 2005 to 2009. Seeing as that car was also developed by Team Penske and claimed two of Porsche's 19 victories, it seems that the pairing between the two is relatively good. It seems then that Porsche has really jumped back into the action 100% after their sudden departure in WEC at the end of 2017. And in all honesty, it'll probably feel like they never actually left. Now that we've introduced the new 963, let's dive into the differences between the new LMH class and the brand new LMDH class. There are a few different points to go through here, so I'll try and be as straightforward as possible. Firstly, the Le Mans hypercar class, or LMH for short, has actually been around since 2021, with the likes of Toyota, Alpine and Glickenhaus, and possibly Peugeot as of late 2022. Toyota has been dominating the space since the departure of Porsche, with the likes of Alpine running very, very old machinery, all the way back from an LMP1 car that's just been slightly BOP'd. The hype is that the LMDH class is now being introduced into WEC as of next year, and will allow both the LMH class and the LMDH class to compete against one another, as they're going to be BOP'd so they can run relatively similar specs. This means that the number of cars has jumped from three or four to potentially well over 10, which is going to make racing significantly more interesting. As of next year, we are expected to see Peugeot, Ferrari and Vanwall competing in the Le Mans hypercar class category. So even without the LMDH cars being introduced, it's still going to make racing more enjoyable and hopefully more exciting. LMDH is the latest generation of prototypes that will be primarily raced in the IMSA Championship. The new LMDH category will be taken over from the current DPI 2.0 cars that race in IMSA, although when that does happen as of next year, they're going to be called GTP. The aim here is to reduce the cost that it takes to actually enter the series, allowing more teams that wouldn't necessarily have the budget of the really, really big high brand to be able to enter as well, thus meaning more cars on the grid and better racing. The LMDH class will debut at the 2023 Daytona 24 hours, although Porsche and Penske have announced that they're going to do a non-competitive dress rehearsal later in the year at the final round of the World Endurance Championships at Bahrain. There's quite a few differences between the two classes, especially when they come to race in Le Mans together and in the World Endurance Championship next year. So what I've done is put together a handy little table so you can see the really high level points. First off, the name. Now we've talked about this a little bit. LMDH is going to be Le Mans Daytona Hybrid and the LMH category is called Le Mans Hypercar. The series that these cars will be racing in will be both IMSA and WEC for LMDH, but will only be WEC for the LMH class. Budget limits, without the internal combustion engine, the LMDH car will be costing a million euros and that is their budget cap. Whereas with the LMH cars, they don't have a budget limit. Powertrain, both the LMDH categories and the LMH categories are free to choose what powertrain they run. Horsepower limit, when they both compete, will be 671 brake horsepower. 
Hybrid layout wise, you will have the LMDH will only be allowed to go to the rear wheels, whereas LMH, you will have both front and rear hybrid powertrain that will be allowed. The weight limit for both of these categories is going to be the same at 1,030 kilos. And in terms of the platform, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So with the LMDH, you have the LMP2 chassis from Dallara, Orica, Multimatic, and Ligier. Whereas with the LMH category, they will be based off of their hypercar road going counterparts. So you're going to see a lot more development in terms of the styling and general chassis that they will use. Obviously, they have to still stick with the safety regulations, but apart from that, they're very, very much free to choose. And this is where it now comes to the aero and bodywork. So with the aero LMDH, they have to stick to a strict ratio, but they are still free to design. With LMH, they have a lot more freedom to design as well. So both categories can choose what they want their cars to look like, which we're already seeing in that now with some of the cars that have been released and previewed. There's a few other caveats between the classes to make sure that one of them doesn't necessarily have a massive advantage over the other. For example, when it comes to the hybrid powertrain and the electric motors, the LMH category will only be able to engage their four wheel drive electric motor over 75 miles an hour to try and keep things a little bit more even on corner exit compared to the LMDH cars. So far we have Porsche, Acura, BMW, Alpine, Vanwall, Peugeot, Cadillac, and Ferrari that'll be taken to the track from 2023, with some aiming for 2024 in the LMH and the LMDH categories. Some teams such as Acura will be focusing their efforts more on US soil in the IMSA Championship with a possible entry into Le Mans in 2024 and beyond. While the likes of BMW and Porsche will be aiming for efforts in both IMSA and in WEC. We still don't have 100% of the information, and when it comes to motorsport, there is a likelihood that it will change somewhat. However, with the information that we do have now, and realistically, what we can expect from next year, it is certainly going to shake up racing in general, both in IMSA and in WEC. Cheaper running costs lead to more entries, more entries leads to more people watching the series, and then more people watching the series leads to more teams wanting them to enter cars. And you can see the positive cycle here. This is hopefully going to be the start of potentially what we haven't seen for decades, which is several manufacturers all jumping in and competing within the same class. Similar to what you find with GTE and GTD now, but obviously in the prototype categories. Let me know which LMH or LMDH car you'd like to see on the grid in 2023. Thank you all for watching everyone. It's an absolute pleasure and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.